Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Rob. How's it? How are you, Jeffrey? Or El with us? I saw Orel with us. Yes, Orel is with us. I saw Frank with us. I don't know what's happening. I see that it's taking some people to join us. It's taking some time. Yeah, Frank is again here. Yeah, I'm going to admit Frank. I see that it takes some time for people to join us this evening. So, um, yeah, Frank, join us. Good evening, Frank. How are you? Rob, the lights have all just gone out. Yes, I know, I know, I know. It's, it was a, a load shedding at eight. I see Mark Schenker joining us. I'm admitting Mark Schenker. People will join. I think that people still have, uh, some people have uh, data, some people still have, uh, what do you call it, uh, inverters. Uh, people will join us. People will join us. Uh, let's see how things going here. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. I can see. Okay. Hello, Mark. Hello, Rob. <laughs> are you right? How are you? Are you well? I'm lying. Good. I'm lying down to relax my back. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Please relax and enjoy the show. We're going to start course. in a few seconds. I'm just going to give another chance for people because I see, yeah, here's Brian and Glenda now joining us. We'll give another few minutes. It's always take time. There's more people joining us. I'm starting to admit more people. I can see there's more people joining for the show. Let's give another few more seconds just for people to join us. So, uh, first of all, I would like to wish everyone a Tov. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all feeling well. I just would uh, would like just to explain that this coming Shabbos is it's a double parsha. Nitzavim vayelet. Nitzavim vayelet. What it means, um, Nitzavim Vayelech, let me just... Everyone, and I'm going to mute everyone one second. Jeffrey, don't forget to unmute yourself, okay? When we're going to start the show, Jeffrey. I'm just okay. muting everyone. Okay. There's more people joining us. So, um, okay, now we're going to start the show. Now that we have fairly amount of people. We're going to start the show. I would like to dedicate the show in memory of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia Mordechai Ben Rahma, Harav Avram Hayim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Bat Zehava Yaakov Salomon Ben Farha, Dvora Rut Bat Beila, Shosha Blima Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Malka Regina Bat Joya, Keti Gurgia Bat Farha. I would like also to dedicate the show in help of Menashe Naji ben Parha, Lior ben Miriam, Harav Moshe ben Bahi Abati, Harav Moshe ben Devora, Harav Shlomo Yehuda ben Dalia, Harav Avraham ben Marima, Devora bat Esther, Sheina Keila bat Hana, Mordechai David ben Lea, Haim Nahum ben Pesa, Reza Kohen, Ahuva Kaden bat Tali Esther, Baruch ben Sara Hiena, Tzvi ben Hava, Shmuel Meir ben Shosha Blima, יהודה הלל בן שולמית לאה, משה אברהם בן חן אריבה, חיה ציפורה בת רחל, היה לה עדן בת רבקה, טובה ליבה בת רחל, נחום זאב בן שיינה רבקה, יהושע חיים בן חיה לאה, וחנה משה רבקה בת זלדה פליסגד, רפואה שלמה to all of them, ולכל חולי עמו בית ישראל. We're gonna start in פרשת ניצבים. Jeffrey, we're gonna start פרשת ניצבים. I hope that you're with us. אתם yeah. ניצבים היום כולכם לפני אדוני אלוהיכם, ראשיכם, ראשיכם, שבטיכם, זקניכם ושוטריכם, כל איש ישראל. You are standing today, all of you, before Hashem your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders and your officers, all the men of Israel. Okay, Be'ezrat Hashem, Rabotai, I'm going to explain the translation to the Pasuk, then I'm going to, Be'ezrat Hashem, also link it to Rosh Hashem. Let's see how we're going to, Be'ezrat Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give, him, will give us the wisdom. Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'asev Natshliya. Atem nitzavim hayom kulchem, lifne Hashem elokechem. 
That's what the Pasuk tells us. And then he described to us, look what it's described. He described to us Rashechem, your leader, Shiftechem, your tribe, the head of the tribes and all the tribes, Ziknechem, the elderly, Shotrechem, is those police, those that actually force us to obey the law. Call Ish Israel. What does it mean, call Ish Israel? Every member of the Jewish people. That's the shot of the Dvarim. But come the Gaon, or Yoter Nachon, Al Sheikh Akadosh, Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh. Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh born in a city of Andripoli. Andripoli, it's a city in Turkey. And he born around 516 years ago. And he said, you, in, in usually when Moshe Rabbeinu, as a general principle, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he used to speak to the children of Israel in the wilderness, first he used to speak to the head of the tribe, the leaders of B'nai Israel. He said, but look here, there is something very different here. Moshe Rabbeinu speaking to every member of the Jewish people. What's happening here? Moshe Rabbeinu usually speak to the leader, and then he speak to the rest of Israel. But in this case, Moshe Rabbeinu speaking to all the children of Israel. What is the Hidush here? Why did Moshe Rabbeinu come to tell us that he speaks? Why is the Torah telling us that Moshe Rabbeinu speak to all the Jewish people together, not just to the head of the tribe? There is a secret here. So, first of all, let me give you history. Moshe Rabbeinu, in the age of 120, or just a day before the age of 120, Moshe Rabbeinu decided that he's going from what is... I can't say that it was exactly a day, because Parashat Vayelech, it was a day before he died. So, Nitzavim, it was few, okay, maybe a day and a half or two days Moshe Rabbeinu gathered Bnei Israel, and he speaking to all the children of Israel. What's the Hidush here? Say Rabbi Moshe al Sheikh that here there is a Hidush. You know what's the Hidush here? I tell you. He come to teach us that, you know, inevitably, you know, you know, in every community, in every uh, society, these leaders. He said that here Moshe Rabbeinu come and teach us something very important. Atem, you all, okay, Nitzavim in the front, you all standing in the front of HaKadosh Baruch He come to tell you that maybe here on earth, there are certain people that in our eyes, they look important, they, we call them leaders, other call them chairmen, you know, other call them uh, uh, honorary officer, whatever you want to call them, okay? He say in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, those that look important here on earth, not necessary that they important in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That means when we standing in the front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, okay, it doesn't make a difference what title we have. HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't look at titles. HaKadosh Baruch Hu look what you have in your heart. And that's what it says, Atem Nitzavim Ayom Kulchem, all of you together standing in the front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then he start to reveal who's those. So he start with the head of the tribe, the elderly. I'm just skipping until the rest of the Israel. What is the Hidush here, the Al Sheikh Kadosh? I'll tell you that sometimes people in our eyes look very important, but in the eyes of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's exactly the opposite. Those the simple people that no one take attention of them. Those that no one hear about them, you know, they do everything quietly. In the eyes of Akadosh Baruch Hu, they the most important. They the one that important. Those the one that he like. Not that he doesn't like the rest, has Shalom. But those are the tzaddikim. Those the one that doing everything quietly, and that's what said the Al Sheikh Akadosh. Sorry, it come to teach us from here that the Al Sheikh Hakadosh say that here Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to us. Don't in English it said don't look at the don't judge the book by the cover. 
the titles, the the yichas, the, the the whatever the power that they have, the money that they those Baruch doesn't care about it because he's the master of all the universe. He has the money, he has the strength. I have the strength, I have the money, I have everything. You can't fool Akadosh Baruch. Say Akadosh, say Moshe Rabenu to us. Atem nitzavim. You all standing in the front of Akadosh Baruch. Come, Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh, and tell him. Very important principle. All of you standing in the front of Akadosh Baruch. Akadosh Baruch love all the Jewish people. Those that's in the eyes of us that we think that they have a leadership and they the, you have a yichud. Maybe they're not in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch We don't know. Hashbonot Shemaim will leave to him. That's what the Pasuk come to teach us. That this time HaKadosh Baruch Hu speak to all the Jewish people together. Why? To teach you something very important. That we don't know who's important in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I would like to bring another interpretation to what it says. Atem Nitzavim Hayom. You're all standing Today, why dafka the word today? So the Zohar in Parashat Bo, the Zohar Kadosh in Parashat Bo in Sefer Shmot, if I'm not mistaken, in page Lev, Lev is 32, and uh, uh, 32 folio 2. The Zohar Kadosh saying that from that that he said, Atem Nitzavim Ayom, referring to Rosh Hashanah, that we all going to stand in the front of the Almighty. And here the Pasuk actually tell us what is it? Rashechem, Shiftechem, Ziknechem, Shotrechem, Kol Ish, every man. It said that in Rosh Hashanah everyone gets judged. Doesn't make a difference if he's a leader, he's not a leader, if he's a Jewish, if he's not Jewish. Doesn't make the position, they all get judged on Rosh Hashanah. That's the Zohar Kadosh. So what's the Hedush here? The Hidush here come to tell us something very important, say Hazar. And then it says, Kol Ish Israel, every Jewish person. Why did he say every Jewish person? Said the Zohar Kadosh, and actually Rabbi Shimon Bar Yimchai there bring in the Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin. And Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin, also in the Gemara in Masechet Shavuot, by the way, it's both the, both the Gemarot bringing it in Masechet Sanhedrin in 27, Folio 2, that's, yeah, 27, Kavzayin Amud Bet, and Masechet uh, Shavuot, uh, Lametet, Lametet? I think so, Lametet, that means 39, Folio 1, I'm not sure whether. Tell us something very important, listen what Hazal say, Kol Israel Arevin Zelaze, all the Jewish people uh, have Obligation one to each other. That means we, we all standing in surety one for each other. It's come to tell you what it says, call Ish Israel. What it means, call Ish Israel, you have to understand that we have the responsibility, each one of us, for other Jewish person. That we have to understand that Has Shalom, a person can say, don't worry about me. I'm not part of the Jewish people. Has Shalom, you can't say that. All the Jewish people, it's like a change. And if you break one ring of the change, you're breaking the change completely. That chain cannot be one unit if you break one chain. Come to teach you that we have to understand that we're standing before Rosh Hashanah. Atem nitzavim ayom. You still soon going to stand in front of Kadosh Baruch Hu in Rosh Hashanah. But now we're before Rosh Hashanah. Try to be united. Try to be as much as you can to influence whoever you can to be ready for Rosh Hashanah. That means to do as much more mitzvot, to take with us a lot of mitzvot to change the decree. So each one of us have to carry a lot of load if he can influence other, if he himself do more mitzvot, try to be together. Try to teach any any Jewish person, and that's what he said, call Ish Israel, every Jewish people to do a mitzvah. Why? Because if we're gonna come as a big change full of mitzvot, how much so we can change things? And that's what it tells us. 
אתם ניצבים היום, you're all gonna stand in front of the Almighty, who's you all, all the world, but it says כל איש ישראל, also all the Jewish people, you have to understand that I'm gonna judge the Jewish people as one nation. Beside that I'm gonna judge everyone individually, I'm gonna judge the Jewish people as one man. Because we all want change, as Hazal tell us in the Gemara Masechet Sanedrim, Masechet Shavuot 27, Folio 2, and 39, Folio 9. Come to teach us something very important, that the Jewish people get judged not only individually, also as a nation. And that's the Hidush of the Zohar. And that's what it says, Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem. What it means, Kulchem? Everyone. get judged on Rosh Hashanah. But the Jewish people have a better chance. What is the Hidush? That we get judged individually. Individually, not necessary that a Kadosh Baruch Hu will write and will seal us by Ezrat Hashem Lechaim Tovim. That he should write and seal all Ben, all Amo Bet Yisrael Lechaim Tovim Moshalom. But when we get judged as Klal Yisrael, All the Jewish people is a better chance that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will write us and seal us. So that's the Hidush of the Zohar. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu done with us mercy, have so much mercy on us and compassion that he doesn't only judge us individually. Look at the Hidush of the Zohar. Let's go on to verse 14. And in verse 14, we see something very interesting that Moshe Rabbeinu say. Look what it says. Right. Jeffrey. Right. But who... With whoever is here, standing with us today before Hashem, our God, and with whoever is not here with us today. If you look carefully, look what it says. Whoever with us here today is standing. But those that are not with us here today, it doesn't say standing. The word standing is the major key. Moshe Rabbeinu said to the children of Israel, whoever with us here is standing, stop. Then he continued, and those that not with us today, why didn't say standing? That's the question of the Ramah Mipano. Who was the Ramah Mipano? The Ramah Mipano was Rabbi Menachem Azariah Mipano. He born in the city of Bologna. Bologna is a city in Italy. Uh, he born, sorry, I just needed to admit uh, what his name is, He born around 475 years ago. Just to give you a bit of knowledge who was the Ramah Mipano. The Ramah Mipano was one of the greatest Kabbalistic rabbi that lived in that time in Italy and Europe. He was one of the greatest uh, Kabbalistic rabbi. He wrote the book. One of his famous book that everyone know, it's Sefer Agilgulim, the book of reincarnation. And there he explained who was in the previous generation, who was his reincarnation, which averot that people do, what Kadosh Baruch Hu going to bring him back is, and etc. It was a very, very brief Kabbalist. And he also wrote commentary on the Torah, but he wrote the commentary more in depth. And according to that question, you can see now how deep he was thinking. He said, why, when Moshe Rabbeinu was speaking to the children of Israel, he says, standing. That's mean on his generation. But when he's speaking about the generation to come, he didn't mention the word standing. Ask him, what's the difference? How come that about his generation, he said, they're standing, standing up. He said, come and I'll explain to you. He said, you have to understand that Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking about his generation. His generation is the generation of Dor De'a, 
generation that knew all the Torah, generation that have a great foundation, foundation that you can't believe that they saw miracle in their own eyes. And the Torah tell us, and Hazal and the Mishnah and Masechet Avot said that during the 40 years in the wilderness, Bnei Israel, the children of Israel, done only 10 Averot in 40 years. Be'asara, Ve'inasuti is the Esra Pa'amim, sorry. Ve'inasuti is the Esra Pa'amim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe Rabbeinu, look, they try me 10 times. Rabotai, during 40 years to make only 10 Averot, it's unheard of. <laughs> it's zero, 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 point zero, four Averot in 40 years. That's, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's unheard of. A person today, when we're waking up, we can do 10 Averot. So say Moshe Rabbeinu, about my generation, I can say that they're standing. Why they're standing? Because they have the foundation. They have the foundation in believing in Akadosh Baruch Hu. They have emuna. Okay? They sacrifice their life. They jump into the sea. They left Egypt to go to where? To the wilderness. I don't know if they have food. They don't have water. What if they know one thing, that in a wilderness, there is snakes and scorpions. And at those so, they follow me to the wilderness. And that's what the prophet said. I remember the kindness in your youth. You follow me to the wilderness and a land that I'm plowed. That you can't plow. There's nothing growing in the wilderness. Say Moshe Rabbeinu, my generation, I know that they're standing, they have the faith, they have the emuna, they have foundation. But what about the generation that's going to come? Because Hazal explained to us, there is what we call the decline of the generation. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu didn't say Omdim. Because Moshe Rabbeinu knew that will come a generation that will have a lot of doubt, a lot of doubt in Emunah, in Akadosh Baruch Hu. So when he speak about his generation, said Ramami Pano, what did he say to them? Omdim, they are solid, they're standing up. Why? Because they have a foundation. But those generations that are going to come much later, I can't say that they have foundation, that they're standing, because they have a lot of doubt. They will have a lot of doubt in Emunah and Akadosh Baruch Hu. Say, that's what the verse is trying to tell us. Et asher yeshno po imanu hayom. What it mean, et asher yeshno imanu po hayom? It's called to tell you those that we have with us today, they are standing. Okay? But those that will come, who knows? Who knows? Who knows how their fate going to be? And that's the secret behind it. And now we can understand why did Moshe Rabbeinu spoke about the future generation to come. Okay? That's come to tell us how much that we have to be strong in our faith in Akadosh Baruch Hu. Let's continue to verse 17. And in verse 17, we actually see... What? Yeah, here's it. In verse 17, actually, there is a hint to us, Rabotan, about the shofar. And where is the hint to us? That we see now what the, the mystical rabbi explained to us, that here there is actually a name that's an acronym of certain letters that speak about the shofar. And it's like this. Pen יש בכם איש או אישה, אוקיי? שורש או שבט אשר, ואיזה פן יש בכם איש או אישה או משפחה או שבט אשר ליבו פונה היום מעם אדוני אלוהינו, ללכת לעבוד אלוהי גויים, אלוהי הגויים ההם. פן יש בכם שורש, פורה, ראש ולענה. בכבוד. 
perhaps there is among you a man or woman or a family or tribe whose heart turns away today from being with Hashem, our God, to go and serve gods of those nations. Perhaps there is among you a root flourishing with gall and wormwood. Oh, it's a, it's a bit heavy, heavy pasuk, but we'll try to explain it, how the Mekubalim explain it, to get a benefit. In the pshat of the Dvarim, the, the, here Moshe Rabbeinu tried to tell us that has shalom, that if there is a man or a woman or a family or even a tribe, jumping to a tribe, okay, that doesn't follow Akadosh Baruch Hu, doesn't follow the Torah of Akadosh Baruch Hu, doesn't follow the mitzvot of the, the Almighty. And the opposite is heart, is desire and follow after Hevel Varik. That means idol worshipping like the other nation. That's on the pshat of the Dvarim. But come the Mekubalim and explain to us that there is here a secret. You say if you take the last four words of this verse, Shoresh, Pore, Rosh, Vela'ana. He say if you take the acronym of every letter, you can get the word Shofar. Hmm, okay. Say Shofar. So what's the Hidush here? Well, I mean, okay, you can find a verse that if you take the letter Shin, then you have the Le'ana, it starts with Vav, Shin, Vav, Pore, Spey, and Rosh, and you get the word Shofar. Okay. So the Mekubalim come to tell you that here, that the Torah speak about how you should behave and watch the job of the Shofar in Rosh Hashanah. Rabotai, next week is Rosh Hashanah. So at the side, Baruch Hashem, little bit, little bit the wisdom that, Akadosh, that I receive from Akadosh Baruch Hu, to try to link this Pasha to also to Rosh Hashanah. So the Mekubalim explain like this. And they say, look, in Rosh Hashanah, what is the most important thing for us to be? That when we're standing on a, in the front of Akadosh Baruch Hu for the judgment, we have to be humble. That means that we have to bend ourselves, not to stand like an arrogant person, stand still. You know, show a bit of humility, humbleness. He said, the Torah here is hinting to you that there is Shofar in Rosh Hashanah. And we know one of the most important mitzvot is to listen to the sound of the Shofar. We'll explain just now why. It's come to tell you that, number one, you have to behave like the Shofar. The Shofar, the Shofar always have to be bent a bit. He said, when you're standing in Rosh Hashanah, when you're coming to dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Come with humbleness and humility. Don't be arrogant. Be like the shofar. But we say that the sound of the shofar, it's one of the most important in Rosh Hashanah. On a pshat of the barim is to wake us up to make tshuva. Come the mekubalim and tell us, look what it's telling. It speak about those people that wanted to leave Bakadosh Baruch who didn't want to believe, didn't want to follow Torah and Mitzvot. He said, the sound of the Shofar said the Mekubalim, Rabotai, listen to it. Bekoa HaShofar La'akor Min Adam. That means in the strength of the sound of the Shofar, La'akor HaShorashim HaRa'im. What it mean, La'akor at HaShorashim HaRa'im? It means that to conquer, to up, to take those bad roots, that means bad thought, bad belief, has the shalom that we have on us, all those negativity, bad energy, the sound of the shofar have the strength and the power to take it out of us. 
That means when a person listens to the shofar, you just have to focus. What do you have to focus on? That you have to focus and you have to say to yourself that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will uproot all of those bad thought, bad energy that doesn't allow me to worship HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So that's the Hidush on that verse. On a pshat of the Dvarim, it's talking about don't follow the going. Don't follow idol worshipping. Don't follow those that worship idols. Like the other nation. But the Mekubalim come and explain that there is here also an answer. How to take it. What is it? It's the sound of the shofar. And that's what we got, the acronym, the word shofar. It's not just that happened here by mistake or by coincidence that we got the word shofar from the acronym of those four words. It's come to tell you what's the job of the shofar and how, as we as Jewish people in Rosh Hashanah, when we listen to the sound of the shofar, what is it come to tell you? It's come to tell you something very important. It's come to tell you by listening to the sound of the shofar and you're focusing. And you're saying to the Akadosh Baruch Hu, please, take all of those evilness, bad energy for me, that I can start working and worshipping the Almighty with all my heart. I would like to bring another interpretation that it's come to teach us that there is something very important here. Said the Gaon Hida, Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai, he born in Jerusalem around 299 years ago. And he said like this, it's tell you that these certain people, what the Gaon Hida now gonna do, he gonna interpret the Pasuk in a different way that many of us heard about it maybe. I heard about it nonstop. It's quite often these people coming to sit and speak to me. I need to listen to them and they tell me, you know, Rabbi, I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I love HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I don't need to do mitzvot. I say, oh, how come? What, are you above everyone? And they said to me, HaKadosh, I believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's enough that I believe in my heart in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Come, the Gaon Hida Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai. And he knew that will come people like this. And they saying to me, and he saying that will come a generation that will say, you know, Rabbi, I'm a good man. I don't steal. I don't do anything bad. But you know, for me, I don't need to go to shul. You know why he doesn't need to go to shul? Because he believed in Akadosh Baruch Hu in his heart. In his heart, he worshiping Akadosh Baruch Hu. But if you worship HaKadosh Baruch Hu, okay, you, or let's put it this way, if you're claiming that you're worshiping HaKadosh Baruch Hu, why don't go to Shul? Why don't go and dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Or why you don't dive in at home? Why you don't learning Torah at home? That's, they don't have answers. He come to tell you that there are certain people that for, to find for them excuse not to do mitzvot, not to daven. It's easier for them what to say? Uh, sorry, and not to learn Torah. What is easier for them to say? I believe in Akadosh Baruch in my heart. A guy come and tell me, I speak to Akadosh Baruch Hu. I said, that's all beautiful. We need to speak to Akadosh Baruch Hu every day. And Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev, he speak a lot about it, bodedut, it bodedut, is to sit by yourself and to speak to the Almighty. To speak to the Almighty, like you're speaking to a Father in Heaven. But from here, to go and not to do the mitzvot, not to daven, not to learn Torah, I don't want to talk about not keeping Shabbos, keeping kosher, and etc. That's definitely I'm not speaking. 
It's come and tell you the Gaon Hida will be a generation that will come and say, Choresh Pore Rosh Veleana. That they'll find any, they're going to find any claim, any excuse just not to do the mitzvot. They'll give all different reasons why they don't have to learn Torah, why they don't have to daven, why they don't have to keep the mitzvot. Why? Because they believe in their heart. They're good people. That's according to them. I'm not saying that they're not. But say the Gaon Hida something extraordinary. Say the Gaon Hida Shorish Pore Rosh Ulana. That's all. All just to find excuse not to worship Akadosh Bhakti. Let's continue and move to um I would say, let's go and move to verse 19. And we see here something very interesting. It's again a rebuke of Moshe Rabbeinu to the children of Israel. Look what he said. Lo yaveh Adonai seloach lo keaz yashan af Adonai vekinato ba'ishahu verafza bo kol ha'ala ktuva basefer hazeh. ומחה אדוני את שמו מתחת לשמיים. השם will not be willing to forgive him. For then Hashem's anger and jealousy will smoke against that man. And the entire imprecation written in this book will come down upon him. And Hashem will erase his name from under the heavens. <laughs> Frightening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit heavy. It's a bit heavy. But I'll tell you why I brought it. We spoke about what the Gaon Hida said. And look what the Pasuk say. And the Pasuk say like this. That's mean here the Torah tell us something very important. The Torah comes to tell us that those that Lo'aleinu don't want to keep the mitzvot, okay? And one of the mitzvot that we have, the, the Shulchan Aruch in Or Haim in uh, Siman Samech, Siman Samech is 60. Siman 60 verse 4, the Torah tell us that Mitzvot zrichot kavana. Person, when you do a mitzvah, you have to have a kavana. For example, when a person do a mitzvah, whatever mitzvah is, it doesn't really make a difference what mitzvah is it. You have to have a kavana. What is the kavana that you have to have? Say the Shulchan Aruch that I have the one of the kavanot. For example. I'm taking a fruit and I'm saying a brocha, okay? Bore preait, for example. Let's take bore preait. That Akadosh Baruch Hu created that tree and I'm asking permission to eat from it. Okay? So the Kavanah is that Akadosh Baruch Hu created that fruit from the trees with his kindness, with everything that comes from Akadosh Baruch Hu. Come the Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, and Siman Samech, Orahaim Samech, remember 60. If you want to look at it, Saif Dalet, he said that you should have another Kavana. And the Kavana is, Rabota, listen to that, that when you're eating, that I'm doing what Akadosh Baruch Hu tell me to keep the mitzvot, okay? obviously, to absorb the mitzvot. When I say to keep mitzvot, it's to absorb mitzvot, to learn Torah, and whatever written in our Torah, I'm doing it, okay? That, that's the kavana that I have to do. That means whatever I do, I'm actually doing because the Almighty asked me to learn Torah. Kadosh Baruch Hu asked me to keep mitzvot. It said that that's has shalom, if a person doesn't do mitzvot and go opposite, what's going to happen to him? 
What's gonna happen to him? Ay, 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 ay. Kadosh Baruch Hu, not only that he gonna punish him, look what it says, V'maha Hashem et Shmo mitachat ha-shamayim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna raise his name. So it's come to tell you to be ready to change our deeds before Rosh Hashanah. How much we have to work on ourselves to prepare ourselves to be ready for Rosh Hashanah. I think that that's enough for Parashat Nitzavim. I think that let's move on to Parashat Vayelech. In Parashat Vayelech, it's a different parasha. Uh, Jeffrey, will you move on to Parashat Vayelech? Yes, Ruth. Yes. And then it said there's something very interesting. Now I want to start speaking about something else. What's happening here? Vayelech Moshe vayidaber at advarim ha'ele el kol Israel. Bechavod. Moses went and spoke these words to all of Israel. Okay. What can you what can you learn from one verse like this? Moshe gone and spoke to all the children of Israel. About that, first of all, I have to explain that was like I explained at the beginning of the show. It was the day before Moshe Rabbeinu died. Moshe Rabbeinu approached every person from Israel individually and gone to say goodbye after 40 years that he was the leader of the Jewish people from the moment that he came to Paro until that moment that he's going to die. That means Vav Be'adar. That's on a shot of the Dvarim. But I saw another different interpretation. There is here a message to us, what is a leader? And I saw a commentary of, uh, uh, of uh, Rabbi Moshe Malka. Rabbi Moshe Malka was for many years the rabbi of Petah Tikva, the city of Petah Tikva in Eretz Israel. He wrote the book, Baal Netifei Mai. That's the name of the book. He born, if I'm not mistaken, okay, take it or leave it, around plus minus um, 112 years ago. Um, I'm not sure. He born in Morocco, by the way, in a city in, uh, I don't know what city, but he born in Morocco. And he was the chief rabbi of the city of Petah Tikva. And he said, look what the Torah tried to teach us here. Vayelech Moshe, Moshe, gone and spoke to who? Kol Israel. What is Kol Israel? What is Kol Israel? It's come to tell you that Moshe Rabbeinu gone to each Jewish person from Bnei Israel, spoke to him individually. Obviously, there is certain people that was more close to Moshe. There is certain people that wasn't so close to Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu is the leader. They didn't only go on and spoke that those, those that was close to him. Moshe Rabbeinu go on and spoke to each one individually. To show warmth to everyone individually. To strength and to give koach to each Jewish person individually. And to tell him, though that he's going to die, he's still going to be with him. Say, Rabbi Moshe Malka, something extraordinary. From here you see what is a true leader. A true leader, those that, obviously, every person has certain people close to him, certain people not so close to him. He said, but that's a leader. A leader that speaks to all the Jewish people. Even that those that they're not close to them, they still show them warmth. And that was one of the beautiful character traits of Moshe Rabbeinu. He said, that's what each individual have to adopt to himself, number one. Number two, each great leader should have those qualities of Moshe Rabbein. I saw another commentary that brought by the book Noah Megadim. Noah Megadim is a book that's been written by Rabbi Eliezer Horovitz. He born around 200, um, call it... Boom, boom, boom. Uh, 218 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure where. 
And he wrote a lot of Hidushim about the, the, the Torah. It's Noam Megadim is a Hidushim about the, the five book of Moses. And on this verse, he asked a question. He said, Vayelech Moshe, Vayitadaberet advarim ha'ele. Moshe spoke those words. What did Moshe Rabbeinu spoke? What does the Torah tell us? Et advarim ha'ele. But the Torah tell us, doesn't tell us what did he spoke. That's the question of the Noah Megadim. Come the Noah Megadim and reveal to us a secret. Rabbi Eliezer Horowitz, look what he said. He said from that, that it said, Vayelech Moshe, Vaydaber et haddevarim, Behei ha'idiya, haddevarim ha'ele, et haddevarim ha'ele, el kol Yisrael. What does it mean el kol Yisrael? He said that in every generation, that suddenly you see a new Hidushim coming. That means every great Rebbe or every Talmit Hacham that write Hidushim or bring a new, new Hidushim in every generation, not only in certain generation, it's come to tell you that it's those words, Vayelech Moshe Vayidaber. Moshe spoke those words to those Talmidei Hachamim or scholar person that will be in every generation to say his words, to say the new Hidushim, to write a new Hidush. Unbelievable how to think about it. What we can learn from one verse that said, Vayelech Moshe, Vaydaber et advarim ha'ele el kol Yisrael. That means that in every generation, that you see Talmidei Hachamim bringing Hidushim, those Hidushim they receive from who? From Moshe Rabbeinu. That means Moshe Rabbeinu speak to them, to those great Talmidei Hachamim in every generation. That's the Hidush of Rabbi Eliezer Horowitz. Let's continue on. And we see in this too, Moshe Rabbeinu say uh, something very interesting. משה רבנו ויומר עליהם משה ויומר עליהם בן 120 שנה אנוכי היום לא אוכל עוד לצאת ולבוא ואדוני אמר אליי לא תעבור את הירדן הזה בכבוד Joshua, he shall cross over before you as Hashem has spoken. Here we see something very interesting. Moshe Rabbeinu actually tell the children of Israel that he turned 120 and basically he born on that day and he's going to die on that day, that Zayn Be'adar, as we know, that's on the Pshat of the Dvarim. And unfortunately, he cannot enter the land of Eretz Israel with them, but Yeshua Abinun is going to lead them to the land of Eretz Israel. And we have to understand what's happening. They're going to conquer the land, and they're going to inherit the land of Eretz Israel. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu tell him that? So a beautiful commentary of the Al Sheikh Hakadosh, Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh, that we brought here. And Al Sheikh Hakadosh said like this: He say here Moshe Rabbeinu giving a word of encouragement, encouragement to the children of Israel before they standing to enter the land of Eretz Israel. What's the Hidush? Say Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh, look. Hazal tell us in the Gemara that. As a matter of fact, this verse in the Gemara in Masechet Sota in page 19, folio 2, Hazal tell us something very interesting, 19, no 19, 13. Yeah. Yud Gimel Amud Bet, can, my mistake. Sota 13, folio 2. Hazal say that Ben 120 Shana Anuchi Ayom, let me just confirm, yeah, Gemara Masechet Sota, Yud Gimel Amud Bet. Yeah, it's telling me here. My mistake, not 19. 13 for you too. Say that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu 
actually telling the children of Israel, listen, I'm born in Zion Be'adar, I'm dying in Zion Be'adar, היום עלו ימיי. That's the Gemara Masechet Sutta. קם דה גאון רבי משה אבשי חנסלה. He say here, משה רבנו telling the children of Israel the day that he born and the day that he died. Zain Be'adar. What is the Hidush? What is the Hidush? What is the hiding behind Zain Adar? Said the Gaon al-Sheikh something extraordinary. He say here, Moshe Rabbeinu hinting to them that a thousand years later will come a guy by the name of Haman Rasha. And Haman Rasha will do lottery in which month he's going to try to annihilate the Jewish people. Why? Because the great leader of the Jewish people died in Chodesh Adar. So he's going to try to annihilate the children of Israel, the Jewish people, because the great leader down that month. What is it to me? That it's come to tell you, said the Gaon al Sheikh, that in every generation you get them, those that try to annihilate you. But it is a Hidush here that Moshe Rabbeinu tell the Jewish people that you don't have to worry. A though that I'm not with you, and those that try to think that I die, but they doesn't know that I born also on that day. Like Amana Rasha. That means that here we're getting a guarantee from Moshe Rabbeinu that he always going to daven to us, a daven to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to protect us. And in every generation, they're going to try to annihilate the Jewish people. And we see it, even in our generation. Look what's happening with our cousin in Eretz Israel. I'm sorry. How much they try to annihilate us. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu always protect us. So what does it come to teach you? Here Moshe Rabbeinu teach us a very important thing. That we should not have any fear. Not to be frightened from no one. If we need to go to war, obviously we have to go to war. Like he said to them, that you should go to the war with Yeshua and you should conquer the land. But he tried to teach us that in every generation they're going to try to annihilate you, but they're not going to manage to succeed. And that's what he said. If you look at verse 6, look what he's saying in verse 6. He's him too. Ve'al tirao ve'al that means be strong, okay? And don't be afraid of them. And not only that, because a Kadosh Baruch Hu is with you. And that's what we have to remember. About how we're coming now to Rosh Hashanah. Okay? A home we done have a But we have to remember that a Kadosh Baruch Hu given us these months. That we can be close to them. And even if we done have a we mustn't fear. Because there is tshuva. HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us the opportunity to do tshuva. And even if the Yetzirah try to tell us, listen, you don't have any more chance. You've done too many. All you need is just to come to HaKadosh Baruch Hu but with kavana from the depths of your heart to say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hatati Aviti Pashat. And I regret those things. I want to open a new page. We mustn't be afraid. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with you. Let's continue and we'll do <clears throat> a, one more thing that I would like to do, verse 11. And actually in verse 11, we learn a very important principle for us. What to study and where to study, where to daven. That's what the verse here tried to tell us. And look what it said. Kol Israel erot et pan et pne Adonai Elohecha b'makom asher ibhar tikra et ha-Torah azot neged kol Israel be'ozneheim. Verse 11. Bechavot, Jeffrey. Yes, sorry. Right. When all Israel comes to appear before Hashem, your God, in the place that he will choose, you shall read this Torah before all Israel in their ears. 
One of the Hidushim. I saw a beautiful Hidush that brought in a book called, called Yoshia Tzion. Yoshia Tzion, it's a book that's been written by uh, Arab Tzion Kohen. That's what it said. I don't know more uh, information about him. I can't help you. I tried to look, I can't. But he said that here, the Torah come to tell us was Hazal teaching us in the Gemara Masechet Abu Dazara. Hazal in the Gemara Masechet Abu Abuda Zara, let me see that page. It doesn't have it here in my. I know. No. No, I don't have it here, but I think it's Abuda Zara. If I'm not mistaken, it's page 19, folio 1. I'm almost sure. Hazal tell us something very important. She'en Adam lome Torah, ela be makom shelibo hafetz. Okay, what does it mean? Hazal tell us something very important. Say. Hazal learned from this verse, Rabbi Tion Kohen, that the person learn Torah only in a place that he feel comfortable, that his heart open. What does it mean? Say that here the Torah try to teach us that there is certain place a person feel comfortable to daven. Certain place a person feel comfortable to learn. Certain place a person feel like he belong to. That's where he should daven. That's where he should learn Torah. Not only that, you say that from here you learn another principle Hazal teaching us. That the person that want to learn Torah, whatever he feel comfortable to learn, that's the book that he should learn. Listen to that. That's here, the Hazal telling us that the person should daven in a place that he feel comfortable. He mustn't go to a shul because whatever reason is, if you're comfortable to daven in this shul, that's where you must daven. Number two, he want to learn, for example, Gemara. He want to learn Mishnah. That's what his heart desires. That's what he must learn. Obviously, above that, you have to do a mitzvot. I'm not talking about mitzvot. There is some people that love to learn homash. Some people love to learn the Tanakh. Love it. I have that. I, I, I have that desire. I love the Tanakh. I love the Torah Shebikhtav. Nachon that I love to join it with a lot of the Mefarshim, a lot of Torah Shebealpeh. With the pardes, it's give me a lot of excitement to learn like this. That's me. But there is others that enjoy Gemara. So you can't force them. No, you can't learn Gemara. First you learn that. No. Rega, rega. Let's make order here. Nachon that you learn to learn the halachot. You have to know the halachot. But if he enjoyed to love to study Gemara, because he loved, you know, the Shaila and Kushia and Tirut, Tirut and Kushia, he loved all of this. Tumult, let him. That's what the Torah tried to teach us. Say, Rabbi Tzion Kohen. And that's the Hebrew that the Torah tried to teach us. That the person should learn Torah wherever he can. And that's the Hidush. And I would like to end up with a nice, um, with the Zerah Shimshon. Obviously, we cannot study the Zerah Shimshon. Hidush that I saw, that I read a few days ago. I want to share it with you. And that's in, uh, in verse 16. And look what it says here. It's a very strange pasuk. But we have to understand it. And Be'ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give me the wisdom to explain the word of the Zerah Shimshon. Ba'yomer Adonai el Moshe, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe, Incha shochev im avotecha, vekam ha'am hazeh vezana, achre Eloi nechar, nechar ha'aretz asher, hu ba shama, bekirbo ve'azavuni, ve'efer et briti asher karateti ito. Bechavo, Jeffrey, verse 16. Sorry, Rob. Verse 16. Hashem 
said to Moshe, Behold, you will lie with your forefathers, but this people will rise up and stray after gods of the foreigners of the land, in whose midst it is coming. And it will forsake me and annul and annul my covenant that I have sealed with it. Okay. What's happening in this verse? On a shot of the break, Akadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe Rabbeinu, you're not going to enter the land of Eretz Israel. That's, that's a decree. You're going to be buried in the Arvot Moab, as we know, just before the land of Eretz Israel, Mul Bet Peor. That means you're going to bury outside the land of Eretz Israel. You're not going to enter the land of Eretz Israel. But the second part of the verse tell us that Akadosh Baruch Hu said to him that the children of Israel worship going to start worshiping idols when they're going to enter the land of Eretz Israel. It's speaking about Eretz Israel, Eretz Canaan. Just remember, in Eretz Canaan was seven nations. But I hear the thing to reveal to us in the menorah. How many arm wars? Seven. Why seven? Said the Mekubalim and the Zera Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, he born in the city of Modena in the north of Italy that was a great Kabbalistic rabbi in his time. He born around 318. His your child was just two weeks ago. And he said that in Eretz Israel was seven nations. Sheva Amamim, as you know. Why Dafka 7? The Mekubalim explained number 7, referring that there is in Eretz Israel was seven evil forces. Rochot Raim. That means that, that seven nations awards those seven evil forces that there is in the world to worship idols and etc. Say Akadosh, Akadosh Baruch to Moshe Rabbeinu, listen, said the Zer Hashem You're not going to enter the land of Eretz Israel. Say Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, and he bring in the Midrash. Look what the Midrash said. Kevan shelo nichnas Moshe Rabbeinu le'Eretz Israel, because Moshe Rabbeinu not going to enter the land of Eretz Israel. When Bnei Israel going to enter the land of Eretz Israel, they're going to worship idols. Because Moshe Rabbeinu not going to enter the land of Eretz Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu, uh, the children of Israel are going to worship idols. Say the Zera Shimshon something extraordinary. What's happening here? Say like this. And he bring in the Gemara in Masechet Arachim. Masechet Arachim and Daf Lev Amud Bet, 32, Folio 2. I tell you, when I saw it, I wanted to see it in my own eyes when I saw it. That's Ezra Sofer, that was after the destruction of the first temple, Ezra Sofer in Knesset Israel, when they came to Eret Israel, Ezra Sofer Daven to Akadosh Baruch Hu, okay, that he will help him and give him the strength, Bikesh Rahamim Levatel Tavodazara Eret Israel. That means that he asked Akadosh Baruch Hu, Akadosh Baruch Hu, please help me to cancel the Yetzer, the desire to worship idols in Eretz Israel. And Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have the merit for whatever reason to enter the land of Eretz Israel because HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that to him. Therefore, said the Zer Shimshon, now you can understand what the Midrash said. The Midrash said, because Moshe Rabbeinu didn't enter Eretz Israel, the children of Israel worship idols. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have the merit to enter the land of Eretz Israel. And if he didn't have the merit to enter the land of Eretz Israel, he couldn't dive to cancel the Avodah Zarah. Why? That's the Hidush. Listen to that. Said the Zerah Shimshon, to cancel Avodah Zarah, the desire to worship idols, you can do only in Eretz Israel. Why Dafka in Eretz Israel? 
that what has started. How many armed there is in a menorah? Seven. There is seven nations in Eretz Israel that they representing, each nation represent different strength of Abu Dazara, that they the source of all evil that when it's come to Abu Dazara, you can cancel that desire only when you enter the land of Eretz Israel. Because Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have the merit, he couldn't have to cancel the Abu Dazara. And that's what Hazal in the Gemara Masechet Arachim, Lamed Bet, Amud Bet, Lev Amud Bet, yeah, Lamed Bet, Amud Bet, that's 32 for your tune. Say, you know why Ezra Sofer Daven? Because Ezra Sofer merits after Babel, after the, the first destruction, after Galut Babel, he came back to Eretz Israel. The first thing that he done, he wanted to cancel those evil forces. And now, said the Zera Shimshon, you can understand why the verse say that you're going to bury outside the land of Eretz Israel. You're not going to enter the land of Israel, Moshe Rabbeinu. And the Jewish people will follow the heart and worship idols. And who's going to correct that? Who's going to rectify that? Only Ezra Sofer. Say, the Zera Shimshon, why? Because to cancel the desire to worship idols, only in Eretz Israel we can do. Why? Because the source, the source of worshiping idols come from Eretz Israel. That it was here seven nations. And there was the source to all of that desire. But I today we don't understand what does it mean to worship idols. If you see a person bowing down to, to, to a statue, to, to, I don't know, to a stone, and etc., we think, ah, we should gonna. Because not people do it. But Hazal tell us in the Gemara that if you want to understand what that desire was, Hazal tell us, look at the desire that there is in our days for immorality. People sometimes do stupid things. Leave the best thing that they have in life and running after immorality. And then they regret it. Uh, today we have, uh, after after we done, we learn quick Mishnah. I just mentioned it. It just happened that it worked together. We don't understand the desire that people have to worship idols. Is like the desire that we had that our generation had for immorality. Look what's happening in a world regarding immorality. That's desire. That's what people have in a time that they should just before Ben Israel entered the land of Eretz Israel. The desire to worship idols. In Eretz Israel, how much so? But we're talking about all the world. And where was the source to all of it? Said the Zerah Shimshon, that's what the Torah tried to tell us. It was in Eretz Israel. That's what Hazal tell us in the Gemara Masechet Arachim. Lev Amud Bet, 32 for Lev 2, that Ezra asked Kadosh Baruch Hu for Rahamim, for mercy, for strength, to cancel that desire. And by Ezra Hashem, Rabotai, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help us to cancel all Abu Dazara, which means every idol worship him. I wonder today we're not bowing down, Baruch Hashem, to statues and stone, but we have the other Yetzirah. Each one of us know the Yetzirah, the Abu Dazara that we have. There is those that everything for them is just money. There is those for them that everything is just food. There is certain Abu Dazara that people love to drink to over excessively excessively drinking that's also kind of avodazara all different avodazara that bezrat hashem that akadosh baruch Hu will cancel all the avodazara and we should merit to worship akadosh baruch Hu and we will return to akadosh baruch Hu in full heart belef shalem and to ask 
for sliha umechila, and I would like to take the opportunity that Bezrat Hashem with you. We're doing going to do show on uh, on Sunday before Rosh Hashanah, and just for us to understand how important is a trabotai that we should do tshuva. Hakadosh Baruch Hu doesn't expect from us to turn the world upside down now, but to take on ourselves. Listen, I. Hakadosh Baruch Hu hatati aviti pashati. Abot, I say those three words to Hakadosh Baruch Hu hatati aviti pashati. Please forgive me, and I regret what I did. By Vrat Hashem, Hakadosh Baruch Hu will forgive all our sin and will write us and call our Mobat Israel. לחיים טובים ולשלום, לשנה טובה ומבורכת בעזרת השם. And we should merit to see משיח צדקנו speedily in our day, אמן כן יהיה רצון. If you have any question, בכבוד, those of you that want to ask questions. Any question, רבותיי, בכבוד, regarding the show. No question. Wow. Okay. So what I would like to take the opportunity to wish well, Rob, all of sorry. you. Sorry. The Havod, the Havod. Sorry, Rob, it's it's a few questions, but it's, it's just, um, it's quite amazing. Um, when uh, we started off, on the, we are, you're standing today, and the Zohar yeah. is saying it's, it's Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we must just be... to remind you, just to remind you, Sefer Shmot, Zohar on Sefer Shmot, Parashat Bo. Remember Parashat Bo. Yes. 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 Continue. Just, just a quick. Uh, yeah. So, so basically, we all judged as individuals. Uh, the whole world is being judged as individuals. But we no. have a, yes, yes, yes. All the world individual we, and the Jewish people. But we as Jewish people are also judged as a whole. Yes. Does that show you favoritism? Yes. 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 Okay. So what's the Shaila? Well, the, 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 the question is this. Um if you're as an indi- well, if you're as an individual you're 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 judged you're judged for your own deeds Nahon. um where does it affect the whole with the judgment of of the whole nation i mean we know that every mitzvah we do uh, it it adds to it, it takes away the negatives and in, in it but here Nahon. we are here we are being judged for ourselves, um, and uh, we are going to have to repent of obviously for what we've done. How do we? How do we that reconcile that with the overall judgment of Israel? Let's say we are on the a lot of negatives, and there's the uh, the other people that are, are very positive. How do, how does that reconcile? Okay, now I understand your question. Okay, I understand. I understand. There is here what we call the element of favoritism. And I explain to you why. You, when you dive in, for example, Amida, you've been focused on one part of the Amida, two part of the Amida, three part of the Amida, 50% of the Amida. You understand? Yes. And there is 1% that you didn't really focus. But Haim Yankol did focus. And Haim Shmerol did focus on all the others. Akadosh Baruch Hu take it all together and put it as one. Koah Hatibu, the strength of the Tibu, of the congregation. Said the Rashash, the Rashash, Rabbi Shalom Sharabi, was a great Kabbalistic. He started Yeshivat Bet El in in Yerushalayim, he was from uh, from Yemen, Shana. He said, and he revealed to us a secret. He said, when you dive in a tzibu, and though that maybe there are certain things that you're not focused, other people in the davening focus. 
He said that tshuva b'tzibur, a repentance, as a klal, that means in general, with all the congregation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu accept they more, much quicker than the individual. That means that when the when you doing repentance with the klal, that means the entire congregation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgive you in the merit of all of that congregation. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. You yes, understand so how it works? That's an extension now, yes. That not only extension, it's given you more weight. Because yeah, but... you as an individual, you're not, not going to change a lot the scale. But here comes the weight of the scale and bringing you more mitzvot. So immediately you go up. You understand? Yes. That means yeah. judge in favor of all the congregation. Isn't that amazing? Well, we're very fortunate, aren't we? We're, we can only, only a father would do to his children that. <laughs> the father that he loved. Yeah. The father that he loved these kids. And you know, I heard today, I was in shul, so I spoke to one of my friends, and he said to me, you know, a father can never love his kids the same. I said, how can you say that? He said, I'll tell you. Every kid is different. Look at your finger. They're all different, Rabbi? I say, yes. He say, every one of my kids, they're different. He say, I'm sure that your kids also. He say, you should love your kids for who they are. And that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu do with us. He loves every Jew for, whoever, for what he is. And that's our job. To love everyone who, for who he is. I tell you, that's given me such a hidush today that that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu judges. You know that Haim Shmero battling with certain mitzvah. But for Haim Yankol, it's easy. But from the other way, what's easy for Haim Yankol, difficult for Haim Shmero. Or what's difficult for Haim Shmero, easy for Haim Yankol. HaKadosh Baruch Hu put them together, this mitzvah and this mitzvah, and that's how they live together. You understand me, Jeffrey? Yes, yes, yes. And that's right. the favoritism that we get. Yes. Okay. Let's go. I hope Thank that you. I explained it properly. Yes. Uh, Very okay. good. Very clear. One other thing, Rob. Again, we, we, um, Moshe now spoke those words, and uh, he spoke it to give it for not only the people stand there, but for all the next generations. It was mentioned, you mentioned that uh, all the Chedushim, which come in the future, was this Moshe has actually told about it. So the souls of those people must have been there at Sinai to receive it. Or the people that were there, their souls were reincarnated to be able to Because how, how can Moshe personally be able to give them the Chedushim if they weren't there at the time? Because mm -hmm. Moshe's not in the future. He's with them now. And that's what the Al-Sheikh HaKadosh say, that every spark, in every Jew, there is a spark of Moshe Rabbeinu, from the Neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's how Moshe Rabbeinu, that's me, Hazal tell us something very important. Tzadikim, a tzaddik, after he passed away, is still alive. Why? Because his strength, or coming from him, going while he, you think that he passed away, but no, he's still, because all the Hidushim coming from who? From Moshe Rabbeinu. So Moshe Rabbeinu never died. That means that the tzaddik, after he passed away, is still alive. Because you talk his Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu speak to every tzaddik in every generation. A continuous chain. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Amazing. Absolutely. When you amazing. learn Torah properly, what is mean tzaddikim nikraim hain bemitatam? A tzaddik, there's two interpretations. Because you're learning his Torah, so he's still alive. 
whatever yeah. he wrote, whatever Hidushim that you mentioned. And that's what it says, Kol ha'omer davar b'shem omro mevi geula la'olam. Hazal said. Kol ha'omer davar b'shem omro. If you say something in the name of someone, you bring redemption to the world. Now you understand why. You're keeping him alive. You're keeping it alive. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Dov. Thank you. Pleasure. Rabotai, any, any, any other question? No. And that's, I would like to take the opportunity. I know I've gone 20 minutes over time, but uh, I think that you enjoyed the show. You enjoyed the Hidushim. I would like to take the opportunity to wish you all Shabbat Shalom. Have a beautiful Shabbos. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we meet on Sunday. Sunday, I'm going to do the Sha'ul regarding the symbol that we're doing in the Rosh Hashanah evening to prepare us to understand what's hiding behind that. Why Dafka, those vegetables, those fruit that we have to have on the table? What's the secret behind them? And Be'ezrat Hashem, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu will give us enough wisdom to explain us, to prepare us to Rosh Hashanah. In the meantime, to wish you all Shabbat Shalom, a beautiful weekend ahead of us. Look after yourself. And again, I'm mentioning on Shabbos afternoon around 4.25 at Yeshiva College, I give live show about the Pasha, just in different aspects, more depths to explain the show. In the meantime, Shabbat Shalom to all of you, and thank you for joining us. Have a great Shabbat evening. Shabbat. All the best.